Hello everybody. Welcome to beautiful Hawaii, the wonderful world of energy. Now these past 10 days we visited essentially every energy related corporation on the beautiful and ethereal Hawaiian island of Oahu and the Big Island. We were able to speak with experts in the field to answer questions on their current goal of 100% renewables by 2045. So without any further ado, let's start with talking about where a lot of Hawaii's energy comes from. This bad boy! We started at Par Oil Refinery, where we learned about all the services their work provides to the island, from the fuel oil powering the grid to the jet fuel integral to tourism in Hawaii. Later, we toured the AES coal-fired power plant. This facility could power 20% of Oahu's energy needs 24-7, 365. Next, H-Power. H-Power is a waste energy facility that is innovative with a simple concept, burn trash to run a steam cycle and create electricity. The concept was fascinating and incredible to watch in action. Yeah. A lot of energy. At the end of our first two days, we had immersed ourselves in the world of Hawaiian fossil fuels and, surprisingly enough, we were more excited than ever about the future of clean energy in Hawaii. Oh, hi there, me from the past. Hawaiian oil burning power plant is currently public enemy number one. Um, the solution is super easy. Just slap a couple more solar panels on roofs and harness the sun's energy. Oh, naive little me from the past. This issue of sustainable energy is so much more complicated than that. For one, the size is limited and land prices are high. Fortunately, Hawaii is leading the way for the world to watch. Renewables currently account for 31% of day-to-day -day electricity generation in Oahu, among the highest in the U.S. We started a Kaiwalua wind farm. We also toured two solar farms and their sheer size was mind-blowing. Oahu would need 10,000 acres of solar to meet the island's peak demand, not to mention storage to support it. Hey guys, we're at Hiko right now, which is the Hawaiian Electric Company that provides electricity for like 90% of the Hawaiian islands. Some of our faith in the possibility of a clean energy was restored by Hiko. The confidence of grid operators and the possibility of using biodiesel to solve problems associated with renewables were reassuring. Today, we met the man behind it all, Colton Ching of the Hawaiian Electric Company. Hiko outlined their plans and fielded our questions on how they will transition their grid to the 100% renewable energy. So today we're going around to a lot of our government offices where the Public Utilities Commission later will be meeting with the governor. The Public Utility Commission is trying to make the transition to clean energy more affordable for marginalized communities by income support, loan programs, community outreach, and housing projects. And we're reminded about the issue of land use. Just the day before, protesters were at the steps of the PUC protesting a new wind farm. Finally, we met with the governor, who expressed his support for this plan as part of his goal to make Hawaii more independent. Now, off to the Big Island. We got to witness the Mauna Kea protests. These are aimed at protecting sacred lands and holding government leaders accountable to their centuries of false promises. They have served as a platform for unifying indigenous communities across the island. When we visited a 100% renewable ranch, we were even able to see a stovetop that burned hydrogen gas and even hydrogen fuel cells and electrolyzers. The ranch architect was a big proponent of hydrogen. He said it was silly to exclude hydrogen as a solution for energy needs in favor of only batteries. We quickly became enamored with this land and understood why people fight so hard to protect it. Hawaii embarked on a journey to clean energy without knowing how or if it would accomplish its goal. And maybe it's even okay it doesn't reach its goal at all. Their bold first step is a big one and half the challenge. One that is providing hope and setting an example for the world.